Come home to Jesus. This is the message that Max Solbrecken has proclaimed for 50 years to multitudes across the world. His crusades have taken him to the Hindus of India, Muslims of Pakistan, Buddhists of Sri Lanka, voodoo worshippers of Haiti, Catholics of Malta, and headhunters of northern Luzon. He has preached God's Word in stadiums, churches, tents, universities, and prisons. He comes to you today with the message of God's love and power. The man who is not afraid to preach the truth, Pastor Max Solbrecken. Glory to God. Let me turn to Acts, the 17th chapter. We'll read the scripture before we pray. Precious Jesus. Acts chapter 17. Precious Lord. And we'll read from verse 28. For in him that's in Christ, we live. And we move and we have our being. For in him that's in Jesus Christ, we live. And we move, and we have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. We're gathered here in the name of Jesus, and we know that we are in him right now. For two or three are gathered together in his name. There he is in the midst of them. And so because he is, is here, and because we are hid, said St. Paul, with Christ in God, we are in God Amen. with Christ. You couldn't be in a more secure place than that. With Christ in God. And in him we live, we move, and we have our being, and we know that he is everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere present at the same time. And he's omnipotent, all-powerful. There is nothing as powerful as our God. Amen. Some people think that great power is in Washington or Moscow or even in our little Ottawa. <laughs> but the real power is in the Holy Ghost. Can you say hallelujah? The real power is in God. In God. We live, we move, we have our being in God. And I know that he is the same yesterday and today and forever, never changing. Cannot change, will not change. Impossible for God to change. So the lady here today who needs a miracle, she come to get a miracle. Fibromyalgia. I've seen a lot of people healed. In Norway, a woman who was a leading nurse had been stricken with this thing. And instantaneously, she was made well. When I came back, she testified. She was well, back working. Can you say hallelujah? Amen. Say, in him we live. In him we live, we move, we have our being, we are his children, sons of God. Can you believe that? Adopted by God the Father. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love. Thank you that you care about us. And even when we were unsaved and going our own way, we didn't care about you. But you cared about us. The prevenient grace of God. God's grace reaching out to sinners everywhere even when they don't know about it. Even when we sat in the bar, even when people were out there doing all kinds of bad things, even murderers, 
thieves, liars, even those who blaspheme the name of Jesus, even at that time you loved them and you reached out to us all so we could be in you. For in him, in Jesus, we live, we move. We have our being now. Bless, I pray, every single person here. Let there be miracles and signs and wonders. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And everybody, would you shout a great big amen. amen. Slip up your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. While you're standing, I'm going to read from St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Verse number nine. Reading really as follows in Jesus' name. After this manner also, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass or sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, or from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And everyone said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray now that you'll touch every heart, that you'll heal every person who's sick, and that you'll touch every individual, every family. May your blessing rest upon every family. And we pray for Jack and, and for Maureen as her, with her little grandson today being dedicated in another church. We pray a blessing upon them and upon their family. And now I pray for a revival to sweep this area. In Jesus' name, and everyone say a great big amen. Can you shout hallelujah? It will say Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. I am saved by grace alone. Through faith alone. And in Christ alone. Now shout a great big hallelujah. And scare the devil. One more. And you may be seated please. I want to speak about getting to know God. The reason Jesus came was so he could introduce us to his Father. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus is our Savior. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God sent his Son to save us. What a gift that was. God sent his Son. In John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the only way. I am the truth, the only truth. I'm the life, the only life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the goal is to get to the Father. He wanted us to get to know his Father. He wanted his Father to be our Father. That's why he came. And he, everything he did, he did it so that... His Father would be glorified. You know, it's so important for us to realize who we are in Christ. All because God sent His Son. All because God's love was so great that it had to send the Son. See, God couldn't love us without Jesus. God couldn't love us 
God's holiness was so great that if God were to come and try to reach a sinner, that sinner would have died. God couldn't. In the Old Testament, God said to Moses, I want you to draw out, choose six cities of refuge. Three on one side of the river, three on the other. That a man who has killed somebody unintentionally, he didn't mean it. It was an accident. And he is fleeing away from the avenger of blood. He might run to that city and say, please, let me come in. The avenger of blood is after me. Because in the Jewish way, if you killed a man, that man's relatives had the right to kill you. Right now. But it could be an accident. And a man who is angry won't wait for explanations. And so there was a law. If any man came running and said, let me through. I must get through. The avenger of blood is after me. I've killed a man. Unintentionally. And they would have to let you go. They couldn't stop you. When you came to the city and open the gate, open the gate. The avenger of blood is after me. He had to open the gate. And then he was able to go in. And he would then tell his case to the high priest. And he had to stay there. If he left that place for a moment, the avenger of blood could kill him. The message is don't ever leave Jesus because he's the, he's the, he is the great refuge. All of these six cities, all of them speak about Jesus. He is the city of refuge. God was against us. We had sinned against him. He wanted to forgive us, but he couldn't forgive us. The sin was too great. There had to be somebody that was perfect could pay the price. In all the synagogues, I priest would stand and he would shout out the call of the synagogue. Let one innocent come. Let one innocent come and atone for the guilty. They were waiting for the Messiah. And then he did come. And his name is Jesus. The innocent one. God couldn't have loved us until that sin had been atoned. And so when Jesus hung on the cross, he paid for the sins of the whole world. He took the hammer. When the hammer fell, he struck Jesus. But he was perfect without sin. When he went to Hades, Hades couldn't hold him. And three days later, he rose from the dead. He's alive today. And because he did that, the sin debt has been paid. For every man, woman, and child that wants to accept it. Past, present, and future. And so now God can throw his arms around us in a father, son, father, daughter, embrace. Because the sin has been taken away. St. Paul said that I may know him. I want to know Jesus. Because we know that Jesus is God the Son from eternity. Incarnated. He was God the Son. Now he becomes true man. He was true God. Now he's true man. He's the God man. That carried our sins far, far away. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him with his stripes. We are healed. We are healed. He bore your burden, sister. He 
carried your pain. He took your place. Brother, we can know him only through Christ. We can't know God except through Christ. Jesus said, if you want to honor my father, you've got to honor me. He that honoreth the son, honoreth the father. If you won't honor the son, you can't honor the father. Jesus is the key. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the Redeemer. Jesus is the Liberator. Jesus is the Emancipator. Jesus is God, the Son. Hallelujah. The most important thing, I believe, is to get into the Holy of Holies. It's found in Hebrews. It's here, it talks about Jesus entering the Holy of Holies. And in verse 19, it's just on the 10th chapter, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Christ, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is through his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart of full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience, that's by the blood, and our bodies washed with pure water as the word of God. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. It says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest. How do we do it? It's found in the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, so powerful. Ephesians chapter 2, it talks about the triune God. In verse number 18, well, let's go back to 16. And he, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. The cross, having slain the enmity thereof, and came and preached peace to you, which were afar off to them that were nigh. For through him, through Christ, we both, Gentiles and Jews, have access by one Spirit, the Holy Spirit, unto the Father. We have to come through Jesus. Many years ago, there's a preacher that came to Edmonton. His name was Harald Bredesen. Norwegian background from the USA. He was the one who led Pat Boone into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And also Pat Robertson. He was able to win them both to the Holy Spirit's baptism. And he was preaching in our church and he said, it's easy to get to know Jesus. But it's not so easy to get to know the Father. And I thought to myself, you know, you must have a point there. I was raised in the evangelical church, the evangelical pietyist, holiness Lutheran church. And we talked a lot about Jesus. It was always Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And that's the way it should be. But we didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. And I discovered that Jesus came so that we could get to know his father. That's why he came. And he said in the book of John 14, he said, if you believe in me, my father and I will come and take our abode in you. We will live in you. So you can't divide them, yet there are three persons God the Father is in heaven on the throne. Jesus sits upon the throne and the Holy Spirit is here. But Jesus is also here. And the Holy Ghost is here. 
And the Father's here. Because God is om, omnipresent. He's everywhere. If you go as far as you can to the highest star, if you make your bed in hell, God says, I'm there. God is here. God is here. We want to draw near. Look at Hebrews, the fourth chapter. I challenge you. It's just here in verse 16. Let us read from Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12. For the word of God is quick or living and is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And the joints of the marrow is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest. He sees us all. He knows us all. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked. And we'll say naked and opened under the eyes of him which, with whom we have to do, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Don't lose your faith. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched, with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly, come boldly, under the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. He's waiting for us now. Jesus is waiting for us. It tells us here that if we are his children, we have a right to come to him. And it says in 1 John chapter 3, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear. We are the sons of God now. Now! We have eternal life within us now. We are saved eternally now. Wow. You know, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, say we know. No. Shout no. no. Wow. But we shall know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We will see him face to face. Some time ago, I was saying, Lord, I've never felt worthy to ask you that I could see you face to face. I've never felt others have said they could, they've seen you. Others have said that angels have appeared. No angel has ever appeared to me. Yet others have seen angels around me. They've seen Jesus in my meetings. But I've never seen him. I said, I really have never felt I was worthy. I should come and say, do this special favor. Let me see your face. I know I'll see you when you come. But Lord, it, I'm starting to think it would be a wonderful idea if I could see you. If I could see you face to face and we could talk together I'm starting to pray that now I haven't had the courage to do that all these years I just felt comfortable just being obedient and 
just working for him as hard as I could. Not asking for to- so many demands. But he's kind of pushing me. He's so, like, yeah, you can do that. You could do that. I'd like to see you. Be good. T.L. Osborne saw him. T.L. Osborne had been in a meeting where Hattie Hammond was preaching and Hattie Hammond was a great evangelist preacher in the U.S. of A. She said that she was broken down and had problems and Jesus came to her. And she said, if you ever see Jesus, you'll never be the same again. He said, I prayed desperately. I'd come from India. My wife and I, Daisy and I, we were sick and out of money and we were failures. And then one morning, about six o'clock, he stood at the foot of my bed. And he said, I couldn't move. I couldn't say one word. I couldn't move a finger. And for 30 minutes, he talked to me. Told me, go back to the mission field. Do it this way. Do it differently. He went back to the mission field and became one of the greatest soul winners the world has ever ever seen. I talked to Dr. Butro Butro over there and Peter, Dr. Butro Butro over there, the Assembly of God Church in uh, Cairo, Egypt. He had been out there with the Egyptian Soldiers in 1967. And Jesus had appeared to him. Talked to him. He was separated from the other soldiers. The Israelis were pounding. Had taken out all the Egyptian planes. And knocked out the Syrian Syrian tanks. And and here he was with 3,000 soldiers. He said, I was a born again Christian a Pentecostal preacher. But I had to go because I was of that age in the Egyptian army. And he said, all of a sudden, in the darkness, I looked and I saw a flicker of light far away. He said, oh, my company, they've got a tent and they've opened the door and they've got a light. And I began to walk towards that light. And all of a sudden, whew, Jesus Christ stood in front of him. He said it was bright like day all around him. And Jesus talked to him for four hours. For four hours. I'm sending you back to Egypt. You're going to preach my gospel to, to every Egyptian. And you're going to tell the Egyptians I love them. And you'll tell the people in the world I love them. He said it took him three days and three nights to get off the, the desert. Burned out tanks hiding during the daytime because the Israeli planes were coming over. It took him three days to get back to Cairo. And he said, Jesus, I talked to him. Let's all bow for prayer, please. Jesus. It says here that in Colossians 1, 12 to 18, we're partakers of Christ. It says in 2 Corinthians 2 and 14, he always causes us to triumph. It says in Romans 8, 27, we are more than conquerors through Christ. He says in 1 John 4, Greater is he that's in you than the devil who's in the world. It says in Luke 1.32, with God all things are possible. It says in Matthew 17, 20, nothing shall be impossible unto you. It says, ask and it shall be given you. Matthew 7, seek and you shall find not that it shall be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. 
Then we knock said, shall be open. What man is there among you? If your son were to ask bread, would you give him a stone? No. If he asks for a fish, would you give him a serpent? Something dangerous? No. You wouldn't. He said, if ye being evil, carnal, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit and give good things to them that ask him? Father, I ask you now to meet the need of every person that's here today. I ask it in Jesus' name. For 50 years, Pastor Max Solbrecken has awakened the conscience of his audiences through the anointed proclamation of the claims of Christ who said, No man can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. The truth is, you are either for him or against him. You cannot remain neutral. Great costs are involved in spreading of Christ's gospel. Please consider investing in this ministry. Contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM, Box 44220, RPO, Garside, Edmonton, Alberta. T5V1N6 Canada. You have been watching the Come Home to Jesus television ministry with Canada's preacher man, Dr. Max Solbrecken, who has proclaimed the Word of God across the world for 50 years without fear or favor of man or devil. Ask for Canada's revival magazine, The Cry of His Coming, when you write. Invest in souls by supporting this end time ministry. Please contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM Box 44220, RPO Garside, Edmonton, Alberta, T5V1N6, Canada. Oh, die. Oh, die.